10 foods you should stop eating if you want to be able to lose your belly fat. It's common mistakes that I've seen my clients make time and time again that have stopped them at that 30%, 20%, or that 15% and never allowing them to finally get to their goal. When I was finally able to identify these things, these 10 common mistakes, they're able to break past their plateau and easily lose that one to two pounds each and every single week. And I've been doing this for a decade. Watch till the very end because you're either making all 10 or one or two of these mistakes that are stopping you from baking past those plateaus. Let's not waste any time and we'll dive into mistakes number one with me we all love cooking with olive oil it's amazing tasting in terms of having it in your foods but it's also amazing for your gut health we also know that it is quite calorically dense so let me show you guys and illustrate a point to you and I'm gonna ask your opinion now for you guys watching look at the two sizes a and B how many calories do you think is in a the bigger one and how many calories do you think is in B the smaller one What I'm about to say is shocking. A is exactly the normal serving size that you'd have normally, but in the normal serving size is 123 calories. And in all honesty, you don't need that many calories in terms of olive oil. 123 calories is a ton, especially when it comes out to be 14 grams of fat. That is nearly 30% of my total fats. And here we have only five grams of olive oil, which is 40 calories. This should be how much olive oil you're using to cook with your food. And I'm also gonna give you another big tip. This here has three times more fats and also calories compared to this. This is one tablespoon and this is one teaspoon. So this is a common mistake I see with my clients. If you keep on having one tablespoon and what normally happens is you'll take the olive oil, you're not really measuring and you're pouring it all over your food, you're not tracking, it's so easy to have 123 calories in meal one, 123 calories in meal two, let's round it off and call that 300. And then for meal three, you have another 123 calories and voila, you're already at 450 calories just in terms of your olive oil. This is why I recommend if you're gonna use oils or anything or any of these calorically dense foods, then track it. At the very least, I just create this general rule. Use the one calorie fry light spray and that way you save yourself on all the calories. You don't have to give up 40 calories just for a tablespoon and the taste is the same. If you're a person who's using olive oils or oils, be careful, track it. And if you don't, just get the one calorie spray. Let's move on into number two, follow me. The next one is sauces. Now, nobody likes bland food unless you're really like a true bodybuilder, but nobody likes bland food. And when we make our foods, they all contain sauces. And this is a big, big mistake I see too many clients make. That's keeping them out of that caloric deficit. So remember, to lose a pound of fat a week, you need to burn 3,500 calories because that's how much a pound of fat is worth. So in a day, 3,500 divided by seven days in a week is equivalent to 500 calories. So remember, you want a daily 500 caloric deficit, but let me show you a common mistake I see all the time. So here we have ketchup, which we all like adding to eggs, which hot dogs, whichever meals we enjoy. Here we have barbecue sauce. I don't know who doesn't like barbecue sauce. And then finally, having some mayo in your food is also amazing. Let me show you where the damage comes in. We have the sauces we like adding to our foods. Here we have barbecue sauce, there we have ketchup, and there we have mayo. Now, if you had to guess which one of these has the most calories, I'm showing you A, B, and C. So write A and how, much, how many calories you're guessing is in this one. If you've guessed in the comment section down below, in this, in 15 grams of the mayo, naturally, there is a hundred calories in just that little bit. And I know people love adding the mayo to your eggs. You love adding just a little bit of mayo to your salads, right? Because it's still healthy, you're just adding that. But that's just 15 grams of mayo, which is a hundred calories. The one that's the second most dense in calories, you'll be surprised, is actually ketchup. Now, it's not as bad as you would imagine. In one serving of ketchup, you have exactly 33 calories. So in here, in this, you have 66 calories of ketchup in this meal. So if you have ketchup on your eggs for breakfast, for lunch you're having ketchup again, and then for dinner you're having ketchup, that can amount to over 150 calories in total taking out of caloric deficit. Now, finally, we also love barbecue sauce. I don't know about you, but when I make my steaks, when I'm adding them into any of my meats, I love having barbecue sauce. And this would be roughly the amount that I'd add. This is exactly one serving, which is 27 calories per serving. So what I want to mention is that 
Number one, most people don't know how many calories are in the sauces because it doesn't really dominate your food. It's kind of the thing you add on. So you don't end up counting these calories, but if you're having mayos, an easy way to obliterate your calories. Ketchup has calories, but it's not as bad as you'd imagine. But I always recommend rather go for a 50% reduced ketchup just because it has less sugars and that's going to be better for you in terms of calories and the taste, in my opinion, is the same. And for this barbecue sauce, you could go for one that is 10 calories per serving instead of 27. And the one I highly recommend is G Hughes, which tastes amazing. So this is another common mistake I see. And if you're a person who likes a lot of sauces in their meals, then always find a calorie friendly alternative and making simple changes like the normal Hanes for the 50% reduced or no sugar added Hanes is much better. And simply making these changes with your sauces will help you tremendously. Let's go on into the third common mistake that I see all the time. Common mistake number three, you are going to your grocery store and you're trying to get your protein sources in, but you may not know better. So if depending on where you live, some stores don't show you any nutritional labels. They just say ground beef, but you don't see what the actual macros are, right? That's quite common where I live. And the same to do with foods, but you know chicken breast is going to be leaner compared to thighs or drumsticks, and you may have a preference to them. But let me show you how much these decisions are impacting you. So we'll start with the chicken breast. So I'm gonna show you per 200 grams, how many fats are in there. So we all know, right, the chicken breast is the leanest part out of all chicken, and in chicken breast, there's three grams of fat. So just to show you what that looks like. So here, in this 200 grams of chicken breast, there's three grams of fat. Next, you're like, okay, I just need a source of protein. And I say this because I used to just eat KFC because I was like, I need a source of protein in my first year, but I now know better. And in 200 grams of a drumstick, let me show you how many fats are there exactly. In this 200 grams of a drumstick, that's 18 grams of fat, but we're not finished. What about thighs, right? I know a lot of my clients say, you know what? I love chicken thighs. They taste amazing. And there's a reason for that. So per 200 grams, I'm gonna show you how many grams of fat are in thighs. So per 200 grams of chicken thighs, there's 35.5 grams of fat. So if you're not choosing the right protein source, it can be what is just hurting you in terms of your overall gains. And just for reference, so you guys know how much that is, in my diet, getting onto competition, I was eating 50 grams of fat. 34 out of 50 grams of fat is not the best in terms of what I would decide. So always choose for chicken breast. Cheat sheet for you guys if you're watching my channel. Put the chicken breast in an air fryer. It retains the moisture, it tastes juicy. And put it 180 degrees Celsius. I'm showing you on the screen of the, what that is in Fahrenheit. And then put that in for about 12 to 15 minutes and you'll have an amazing tasting chicken breast. Just spice it the way you like. But what about the lean ground beef? What's the difference here? So first of all, what I want you guys to see when you're going to any grocery store, have a look at these two lean ground beefs when you see a lot more white streaks in the lean ground beef the lean ground beef looks more white than red this just means that there's more fat usually they've mixed more fat into this lean ground beef which is also usually the cheaper one and this one that is very red you only see a lot less fat streaks which tells you there's a lot less fat in this one is usually very lean so let me show you what that difference is in this one right that has a lot of fat streaks we have exactly, I'll show you, this per 200 grams has 21.4 grams of fat per 200 grams. And for the exact same amount in lean ground beef, right, 97% lean ground beef, you only have, and let me show you, and in this one that has lean ground beef, that's only seven grams of fat per 200 grams. So. Whenever you're choosing your protein sources, always go for the leanest option. It allows you to eat more of the food and also save your calories, right? So you get a little bit of extra flavor from the thighs or you get more flavor from the extra fats. But what if you could just add that flavor in different ways with the sauces and also allow yourself just to eat more food as a result if you're just trying to get lean. So watch out for the fatty beefs and the fatty chickens and the fatty fish Make sure that you're hitting your macros, and if not, you can at least use an eye test to see which one is leaner. Let's move on into the next. Okay, here we have a salad, right? Let's picture this as a salad, and I just wanna illustrate a point, and literally, virtually zero calories in here. Now, in salads, I see this all the time, is we'll add some cheese to the salad, you know? So, we'll just sprinkle some cheese for flavor. There we go. So, that's all the cheese that I've added to it. 
And I've also seen this, right? Is adding some healthy nuts into your salad, right? To give it a bit of crunch. Now again, picture the salad's a lot bigger. So remember in the beginning I told you it's virtually zero calories. Now that I've added this little bit of cheese and some of the nuts in here, how many calories do you think the salad is worth right now? And comment down below. And the answer to that is, this was 30 grams of nuts. That alone was 200 calories in your salad. And then I added 25 grams of cheese. And literally, it's just this little block here with a little bit everywhere else. And that was another 100 calories. And now you have a 300 calorie salad. You might as well just have had a Big Mac. And that's the point I want to make is always watch out for these foods that you add into your salads, the dressings, the peanuts, the cheese. Inherently, our body wants to find ways to add flavor and add more food to it. So you add these little things that doesn't look like they're harmful, but it really defeats the purpose of the idea of the food that you're eating all the time. So when my clients make salads, I always ask them to send me a photo of it to see in this big bowl that they've made that there isn't just 200 calories worth of nuts or there isn't just 200 calories worth of cheese. So be very careful of the hidden calories or not even hidden, these calorically dense foods that aren't making your foods diet friendly anymore. So let's move on into the next one. There's a research paper released comparing professional dieters versus just normal people and trying to predict or to guesstimate the amount of calories in foods. And both of them were wildly incorrect. So I want to illustrate this point. Here we have two slices of toast with just peanut butter. Now, I had to actually put the peanut butter on away just so I can remember which one is it, but it's very hard if you look at it, it's hard to determine which one has more calories. And I'm going to tell you, one of these toasts have nearly 200 more calories than the other. So on this slice here, this is 190 calories worth of peanut butter. And this one at 66 grams, double the amount of peanut butter, to four tablespoons has exactly 380 calories, nearly double the amount or actually double the amount of calories just by adding a little bit more peanut butter. Most of the time when people are dieting, they're just like, you know what? I'm going to guess they take it out and they add, but it's so easy to overeat peanut butter and eating an extra 190 calories, which is almost half of the deficit that you're trying to create that day. Here's another example. Now, which one has more oats? And you may be able to tell, okay, this one definitely has more oats, but the amount is significant. In this one, we have 35 grams of oats, which is 133 calories. In this one, we have double the amount, but it's really hard to tell that it's double the amount. And this one has 266. So it's very easy to miscalculate if you're eyeballing. All you need to do, right? And I tell people this all the time when they're like, tracking takes too much time. Well, the difference is, that's it. And then you just have to really calculate and then measure. And the comparison is it can take you 10 seconds to do that. What ends up happening when people don't see results, they're like, okay, I'm going to do more cardio. I'm going to do 15 minutes more, 30 minutes more. So because you're trying to save yourself 10 seconds with putting it on a weight scale, you're adding on 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes worth of cardio just because you were lazy putting it on a weight scale. So I highly recommend you stop eyeballing your foods because that's very likely what's keeping you from seeing results. Just measure it, save yourself the time, and you're going to be so happy that you see your two pounds are down because you're tracking everything and here's another example right we like rice this here is 200 calories of rice which is exactly the same amount of rice in here so do you see how calorically dense these foods can be and if you're not tracking properly it's very easy to overeat so that's what 200 calories of rice looks like and this is what 200 calories of rice looks like. Let's move on to the next one. This one is very innocent, but I see it all the time. You have that concept of after you train, you need to have a protein shake. And I see my clients have extra protein shakes outside of their diet. And yes, we all regard protein shakes as convenient. It's good for you because it's a source of protein. It's not harmful, but it's an easy way to also have too many calories within your diet. So if you're having a protein shake in the morning, one post-workout, outside of the diet that you're already eating and you didn't track it, then it's very easy to overeat. So in a scoop of protein in this one, it's 120 calories. And if you have two scoops, that's 240 calories. So this is quite common, having extra protein shakes outside of your diet. It's definitely something you wanna track. Something that's also very common is the creamers and coffee. So my clients will be like, I'm intermittent fasting, it's helping me. They're saying all I have in the morning is a coffee and maybe a whole month will pass. But they didn't tell me that they're actually adding creamer into their coffee, it's not an Americano 
don't smell black. And these things have calories and they're very innocent. So this one is a coffee creamer in one serving, which is five grams, that's 30 calories. So if you have three cups of coffee, that's 90 calories. And usually one serving isn't enough. So you could have, be having 180 calories in coffee creamer. So watch out for that. And then this one, is zero sugar which calorically is better it is half the amount of calories so again making smart decisions like this and finding the zero calorie options are usually better for your caloric intake again being able to lose your belly fat is about making sure you stay in a caloric deficit consistently so making small decisions like that is so much better for you you're on a diet but your partner isn't and she or he's encouraging you but they're eating the foods they normally would eat and let me show you how these calories can accumulate let's say for example your partner's having a packet of oreos and you're like hey can i just have two pretty innocent right 100 calories and then let's say the day passes and you see they're snacking on some m&ms or you just see their leftover m&ms so let's say you just say i'm just gonna have a few so you, all, all you're gonna do is you're just gonna take some of that that's it that's all you're gonna do and then Maybe you see them snacking on some Pringles. I'm not even gonna go to the peanuts because we've left that. That's 90 calories. Let's round that off to 100. That's another 90 calories. For both of these, that's 180 calories in the two snacks that you just ate. And all the other mistakes I've mentioned in this video and you're already struggling, you're already over your deficit. And then here is 30 grams of a Pringle. And in one serving of that is 130 calories. So 100 here, 100 here, and 100 here. And I'm just rounding off. That's 300 calories that you're overeating just in snacking in your partner's food. So I add this because it's quite common. I even find myself doing it sometimes and it's so subconscious. And I'll tell you this, it's a slippery slope. You take two, that's not enough. You're like, damn, let me have another one. And what I noticed even in my own competition prep is that it would always break my discipline because I would find myself giving myself leeway and the excuse to be able to have a little bit, a little bit. And then the week would pass and I didn't get any results. It doesn't seem like just these two Oreos were what hurt your diet, but it's going to be the discipline that you carry throughout, throughout that day, throughout that week, that ends up making you eat more calories than you're supposed to. And maybe instead of two pounds you're supposed to lose, you only lost one. And that's just because you put too much olive oil that I showed you in the beginning. And then you have these snacks in the day and you're just like, I'm doing everything right. What's happening? And I'm maybe making some mistakes, but I'm doing the cardio and the training. Why am I not seeing results? So watch out for snacking on your partner's meals. And let's go to the final one, which I'm sure everybody's doing. So it's the weekend. Your friends invite you over for some pre-drinks. They're like, Orale, papi, let's get a drink together, man. You want a shot of vodka? I'm allowed to say that because I'm Cuban. But let me show you guys. This is a shot, right? And that's 70 grams. Yeah, this is a real shot. Real ruski shot. That's 70 calories. That's a shot. Bah! You know, have one. Bah! You might even have two. Or, you know, I'm taking it easy. I'm gonna have a beer. <laughs> I'm gonna have a beer. 140 calories in the Heineken. Or, you could just rather eat that in a serving watching so in terms of calories and I'm not even talking about the effects of alcohol in general I'm not even gonna go there what it does to your testosterone your sleep your gut health I'm just talking about food un shot or all that watermelon and if you're dieting right and the same with the beer one beer or the watermelon so I say this I allow my clients to have about three shots at max or they have and have two beers or I tell them, especially in the beginning, rather let's stop with the alcohol in the beginning. Let's get your metabolism in order. And then when we have that in, we can factor these back in. So the point I want to make is these shots, these beers look very innocent because it's just liquid calories. But I just wanted to show you what the equivalent of that would be in food. So when before people say it's my metabolism that's broken, or I'm not seeing the results. Think of all these little intrusive things that come into your diet and your day to day life. That is stopping you overall. So the video here isn't to bash any particular food, but it's to bring consciousness. When you know exactly what you're eating and that you're like, damn, that's actually very high. Those chicken thighs are actually very high in fats. You'll be able to make better decisions. That's all I want for you. I'm going to leave the video here. If you want to be able to work with myself and my team of doctors, you finally want a guaranteed way. You've tried everything. And if you haven't tried anything, don't book with me. If it's your first time ever considering just getting in shape, don't book with my team. But you've tried everything. You want a guaranteed way to get to your results and you want to work with me directly. Fill out the application. We'll jump on a call. We'll figure out a strategy that will work for you. Best case scenario, we'll work together. Worst case, you'll know exactly what you need to do because sometimes they'll do that. I'm like, hey, you know what? Just do this first and then come to us. That will also work. Hopefully I'll see you on the other side. But if you did enjoy this video, leave it with a gentle thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, 
And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.